Enjoy, enjoy. All right, uh, we're joined now by Marshall head coach Chris Grassi, uh, national champion uh, Marshall. Uh, <laughs> Soccer school Marshall. Yeah. We'll first begin with an opening statement before we uh, open it up to your questions. And again, if you have a question, just use the raise hand function, please. Uh, with that, coach. An opening. Congratulations. Uh, your opening statement. Uh, national champion. <laughs> I mean, I'm immensely, immensely proud to be a part of this team. I think those, those guys down there, I mean, they, they really, we all kind of came together this season and we just got better and better and better and we had some bumps in the road. I know there's a couple of people tonight will be, uh, will be happy that they've been a national, championship, a national champion this season. But it, we, we continue to learn from each, each lesson, each setback, and it was the way it felt. It just felt amazing to be to be around this group, to be with each other. Everything felt dialed in. We just couldn't get enough of hanging out, and couldn't get enough of watching scouts and film and, and working with the guys. And it was just one of those things where everybody was feeding off it, you know, more and more. And just being able to hang out socially for these last couple of weeks have been fantastic. It, you know, big congratulations to Indiana. I thought they played really, really well. They caused us, you know, problems on the counter attack, particularly in the first half. And you know, we had to kind of deal with that. Um, and then, but we just kept doing our thing. We kept playing our style, keeping the ball, knocking it around, and, and we got more and more chances. And I just felt there was only ever going to be one winner. So I was, uh, you know, I'm glad we got it when we did. And just when it went in, I just, just felt surreal. All right, thank you. Uh, first question will come from Paul Swan. Go ahead, Paul. Go, Paul Swan, WRBC Huntington. Uh, same question I had for Jabil. Uh, you were watching that play progress. Describe it, and what were you feeling uh, as it happened? I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> so uh, it was, I, you know, it, we just we kind of attacked, and it had been the I don't know the seventh or eighth attack we'd had that was quite similar where we got in and fell and looked like he was going to get the shot off, and he and he did, and then just not seeing as it came down, I thought it was going to go in the first time, and then watching Jamil sort of run in, tap it in was just. It was just one of those moments. I mean, time's kind, time kind of stopped, and I was just kind of, what do I do now? <laughs> uh, your next question is from Tom Bragg. Go ahead, Tom. Chris, Tom Bragg with her 24-7. Jamil's one of the older guys on this team. Obviously, he's, he's meant a lot with the goals the last few games, but, but just with him wrapping up his career the way that he did, what has he meant to this program, being one of the guys that's kind of been there throughout your ten tenure and saw this thing build? Yeah, uh, I mean he's 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 been huge, you know, for us and, and for me Jamil is, you know, he he's grown so much as a player, but he's grown even more as a person, and just watching watching that development, you know, and watching him kind of be sensible. He's he's a, you know, he's a guy who maybe would have said the wrong thing in the first couple of years, and he's he's kind of really honed his um, sort of output uh, outside of soccer. And he's he, he make, he's right on point, and just watching the, the personal growth that he's gone through, it just makes me extremely proud. And look, he's a very dangerous player. He he interprets space. He runs into space. You know, we have a lot of guys who are very good dribbling one v one, and Jamil's skill is finding that space. You know, finding finding the gaps in the opposition, and he, he did, he's done it in the last three games. You know, very well. He's just that that sort of space space interpreter in behind, and he can, he can give teams penetration. And I think he'll. You know, find a, a very nice home at the professional level, and we're very, very proud for him. And, and what a way for him to go out! I mean, there's nothing left for him to achieve. You know, it's him, Pedro, Colin, uh, Kyle Winquist, who left and came back. Uh, you know, from from day one. I hope we're not forgetting anybody. But you know, those guys have have all matured so much. You know, and they've grown into the program, and they've helped us grow the program. You know, you just don't know when you, you kind of have an idea at the beginning of a season, and then you see how the guys are playing, and they kind of grow the idea in a different direction for you. Um, and Jamil, Pedro, Colin, you know, Kyle, they've all done that. They've all helped us grow to where we are today. Uh, Jake Griffith, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Congratulations. Hey, Jake. Somebody okay. predicted this last night? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, I don't I, I will say I did get the microphone working this time on, on, <laughs> on this press conference. But, uh, Coach, uh, September 21st, 2019, you stood across from me in the press box. You just beat Akron, and you looked me in the eyes, and you told me that this is a program that's going to win a national championship. 
from that day, your belief has been unwavering. You accomplish it now. Well, what about this program made you feel deep in your gut that one day soon they would accomplish that? Uh, yeah, it's been a long process. Like I've talked about, the first 17 and 18 were very, very tough, you know, very, very challenging, but the most rewarding uh, of my career. And then after 2019, it all just kind of clicked. And, and once you feel that you can beat a team like that and, and beat some of the teams that we did, um, you kind of feel like you can accomplish anything, you know, and then we were getting better and better at it. And then, you know, obviously we lost some big players in 19, but we replaced them with, with, with big players who just really complemented each other so well and it just kind of clicked, but it's before it's the football, before it's the tactics, you know, we've got to get the logistics right and, and we've got to get the support right and we've had to do everything perfectly well this, this, this year with COVID and, you know, have to be entirely dialed in with all of that. And then it's the culture, you know, the, the, the culture, it was the belief in that game, but, but watching how the guys were interacting with each other, watching how it felt for them to be a part of it and, and, and feeling it myself, you know, once that culture felt right, Everything else felt possible. Uh, Justin Zimmer, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Coach, so uh, I asked you to build this, so I was just you, you know, you, you built this program from really, you built this a couple of years ago, your fourth year, you built this program to now the national championship level. What's it going to be like for you that now you're going to be etched in martial history in the ego? When you go back down to you're as national champions, what's that like for you? Um, I mean, I can't tell you when it happens. <laughs> uh, it feels, it, I don't know, it feels a little bit surreal right now, uh, to be honest. You know, it's it's something I've dreamed of. I, I've I've been on the wrong side of this press conference, uh, you know, too many times, three too many times. So to finally win it is just... It's a bit of a relief, and then you know I found my attention start turning to 21. Okay, how do we repeat? What do we need to do? How can we evolve this team? How can we evolve this feeling? How do we keep this going? How do we transplant this to August? How do we then start the the, the recruits and the and the uh, the players we got signed and coming in? You know, how do we bed them in quickly? How do we take almost every one of these guys except Jamila coming back, and we're going to add you know a bunch of talented players to this roster? So how do we then win it again? You know, what do, we, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to, to take this magic and, and to transplant it to next season and then evolve, evolve tactically? Because teams will, you know, look at us and they'll be watching film of, of how we've played because I think it's a little bit different than, uh, you know, most teams I've seen playing this season with the deep possession and, and, and trying to avoid the, the counter a little bit and, you know, being a little bit more tactical when we push numbers forward. And I think, you know, teams will, there's so many great coaches and so many great co coaches in Conference USA, you know, that, that have helped us We've, well, not helped us, but we've had to beat them. And obviously that has helped us, you know, their work, I think, their, their drive in the conference to make the conference, you know, one of the best conferences in the country has, has really challenged us. And, and we'll have to evolve again for, the, for those guys. And I think, you know, Conference USA is going to get stronger and stronger. So as long as we can continue to, to win in there and compete in there, we'll always be ready to, to come out and to have a run in the tournament. Um, yes, yeah, so I think right now, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Thinking about next year, I guess. Time for two more questions. First, we'll go to Paul Swan. Go ahead, Paul. Hey, Coach. Um, how important has uh, Mike Hamrick, athletic director, been in this process? I'm sure a lot of people looked at him like he was crazy a few years ago when he made the major investment in the soccer, and, and look what's happened. And I know without a, an athletic director like him, yeah, how possible is this? Yeah, it's it's uh, the support from from Mike and, and from Jeff has been fantastic. You know, uh, I think the the facility. Obviously, I was in Charleston watching that thing go up, and it was always, um, you know, watching it go up, and it was like, man, that looks like a nice place. That that looks like a place you could pl you could uh, you could play some good soccer in. And, and you know, Mike's been been totally supportive. He's been the first one to tell you he doesn't know anything about soccer, but he knows what he likes. You know, and. Uh, He's he's kind of give us the the freedom and and sort of left us alone to to get on with it and and you know we've had the support when we needed it so yeah you know hats off to him and and you know this is uh, you know as much for for all the guys in the athletic department the facilities guys who plow in the field Chris who plow in the field at uh, for eight hours when it snowed and and our academic staff and our trainers our marketing people you know everybody and that's all you know you know all down to to Mike and and the people who've you know, people he's put in place to, to kind of make this all happen. So, you know, fantastically grateful for the opportunity that he gave me. Uh, final question for you, 
question goes to Jake Griffin. Go ahead, Jake. Coach, I'm going to ask you about the fans, but hey, does it feel nice to get that key card for the last night? I took two. <laughs> I, uh, I came in there at the end of the Indiana press conference, and I heard them talking about the fan turnout. And obviously, Marshall had a very sizable fan turnout. How much credit do, do, does the Herd Nation get at, at being a part of this? Immense credit. I mean, what an atmosphere. Did uh, the last person to leave Huntington turn the lights out? It, it's just been, I mean, this has been absolutely incredible. I mean, this is a, this shows you, you know, for, for all those, you know, people out there looking for schools. And I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of mid-major schools that have great programs, you know, and, and hopefully we've, we've won it for them as much as, as much as for us. But generating that crowd, you know, having the, the, the herd nation here and having them be such a big part of this has just given us that extra boost, given us that extra energy. This was amazing tonight. You know, I think we would have bought every ticket. If they had, had tw twice as many tickets, we would have bought every ticket. You know, the guys were tailgating, cheering us on, and the pressure got bigger for us, but the support was you know, twice as big as the pressure. You know, and they really made it possible for us. And what an environment they created for, for our guys to play soccer in. I mean, absolutely hats off to them. Love every one of them. I think I got a, a back-breaking hug from at least 50% of them today. So, you know, I'm very, very proud to be a part of this group. Chris, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for staying up late with us every night. And the boss